Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. We're happy to have you here worshiping with us virtually uh, again this morning. Uh, a few announcements before we enter into our sacred time together. Uh, just a reminder, one link is all you need for worship, and we're happy that you found this one. Uh, so just share that with your friends and family. Pass it along. Invite. Uh, and The more the merrier that we have in this worship time together. Check-in and prayer continues. It's a great way to stay in touch with your uh, Salem family and friends. Oh, boy. Boy, do I need a spell checker on this one. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 10 o'clock in the morning. And also prayer shawl Zoom is still happening too. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And Cindy will keep you posted if they're going to meet on Zoom or, or outside if the weather's good too. Speaking of outside, if the weather is good, Salem's next food drive and parking lot picnic will be May 7th from 6 to 7. Uh, bring a lawn chair and some food to share with our neighbors at Neighborhood House there and, and share in a socially distanced meal there in the parking lot. We'll just kind of hang out with, with our food and, and get in contact with one another again in the parking lot May 7th from 6 to 7 p.m. And the Native Plant Project has begun. A big thanks to all who helped uh, take out the hostas and, and the irises. And, and also thank you too, uh, on behalf of Sophie and myself who transplanted many of those here in the past few days at our own house. So we can um, make our own property look a little prettier. But if you'd like to contribute to the creation of the Native Plant Project at Salem, uh, please donate. And if you uh, send cash or write a check, just memo it as native plant and we'll make sure that it gets to the right area. Uh, all gifts are warmly received. This project is, is uh, about $5,500 worth of a project, uh, but it's one way that we, Salem, the United Church of Christ, can protect the environment and show our love for the environment to the community around us too. It, it helps preserve uh, just, just more than plant life, a lot of animal life too. So participate. Uh, we'd like to have your, your help doing so. Thank you for doing that. And friends, again, it is with sorrow that, that we announce the passing of Bob Bailey. Um, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. at Thayer Rock, uh, we'll have a, a visitation. Uh, Alice will be there. Um, but please note, it's a limited capacity. We can only have 25 people at one time inside the facility. Uh, so we're just going to start something with a small um, uh, prayer for Alice and, and those gathered. Uh, and then. Some of us will, will leave so that more people can come in and visit. But just keep that in mind from 1 to 2 p.m. Wednesday at Thayer Rock, uh, we'll have a visitation. Uh, we are going to plan on doing a memorial service for Bob, but uh, that's going to be uh, announced sometime later. We want to make sure that we can uh, gather with more of us to really uh, express our praise and thanksgiving for the life that Bob lived. In the meantime, uh, please continue to keep Alice in your prayers. And we're grateful for everybody that has responded uh, and helped us out in this, this past week. So thank you to everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to worship. Let's take a moment to center ourselves in the spirit of Jesus Christ in music. Let the heavens be joyful, let earth the 
song begin Let the round world keep trying And all there is therein Let all things seen and unseen Their notes of gladness blend For Christ the Lord is risen Our joy that hath no end God has set apart those who are faithful. Our creator will hear us when we call. God puts gladness, gladness in, our in our hearts and, hearts and, minds. and minds. We will lie down, lie down in down safety, safety and, sleep and sleep in peace. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. We are here to remember Jesus Christ. We want to be like the one who lived by love. Our faith strengthens us for each day's living. God empowers our ministries of caring. We trust God whose children we are. We look forward to what God will reveal to us. ancestors, author of life, source of Easter good news, we are drawn together again by the mystery of life and death. We call on you so far beyond our knowing with a mixture of faith and doubt. Let your face shine on us as we put our trust in you. Draw together the fragments of our busy lives around the central core of love which you provide, that we might relate to one another as whole people. Grant us a fuller sense of what is right and good and help us to live at our best. Amen.
today's first reading is from the book of Acts. This pericope from Acts is part of the sermon from Peter that offers challenges to his fellow Jews that Christians over the last 2,000 years have misappropriated to malign, persecute, and kill millions of Jews in the name of Jesus Christ. Here, Peter is speaking to an audience of Jews, as we must keep in mind that Jesus' ministry was a Jewish Hebrew faith movement. Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms. In this psalm, one hears and feels distress. How long is the watchword? How long will you turn my glory into shame? This seems to be one of those psalms where there is anguish, perhaps even despair. There is weariness in the extreme. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down and sleep. <laughs>
our reading for our reflection this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, second half of verse 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name, to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Friends, would you pray with me? Gracious God, breathe into us your spirit, we pray. The words from my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be wholly acceptable to you and to find a home in the hearts of these your beloved, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Imago Dei, in Latin, the image of God. We are made in the image of God, every last one of us, in the image of God. This past week has been a flurry of emotions. I've known Bob Bailey for for many years. Uh, Before my time at Salem, as I had met him and Alice in a small group gathering at one of our Michigan Conference UCC meetings, I somewhat remember the conversation and being immediately drawn to his character his engineering mind wrapped around broader concept of humanitarian needs and everything from the environment to issues of poverty and racism and ideas that he had to bring about wholeness within them all. Bob's heart was immeasurable, his spirit even more so. I walked with Alice a bit this week, mostly socially distanced over the phone. And it's been, uh, as a pastor, excruciatingly challenging. Grieving during a time of pandemic offers little solace when community can't be fully presence. That is our in-person presence to love and comfort one another in loss. And that grief was compounded by the week's mass shootings news. Since last Sunday, Seattle, Wichita, Carroll County, Georgia, Chicago made the news three times, Baltimore, Nashville, Pensacola, Washington, D.C., Indianapolis, Detroit, Columbus, Ohio, and most recent at a bar early this morning in Kenosha, Wisconsin. 69 people shot, 17 people dead. This doesn't include other 
newsworthy shootings of 13-year-old Adam Toledo or 20-year-old Dante Wright. And I'm not up emotionally for any argument on those last two, not after a person like Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old who shot and killed two protesters in Kenosha, was able to walk away, and not to mention, even after carrying his weapon illegally, gleaned emotional and financial support from a number of notable and wealthy white people for his action. A GoFundMe page for Kyle Rittenhouse gained more than $2 million before it was taken down. Another Christian-based monetary fundraising platform called Give, Send, Go raised a little less than half a million dollar for Kyle Rittenhouse's legal defenses. Everyone is made in the image of God. Everyone is the image of God. Vast and diverse in humanity, vast and diverse in the rest of creation, our feet can walk, our eyes can see, our ears can hear, our hands can touch, made in the image of God. But like the, the psalmist sings in Psalm 4, how long, O Lord? How long, O Lord, until we recognize Christ among us in the faces of those we directly or indirectly oppress or murder, in the faces of those we staunchly disagree with? Does the commandment, thou shalt not kill, mean anything? Oh, that we might see some good, writes the psalmist. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. As the fatigue of my, my second vaccination shot wore off yesterday, I spent time with my daughter transplanting the church hostas into our small flower beds around our home. She helped me dig and turn the soil and, and reveled in the many fishing worms she discovered. By the way, she named all of them, every last one of them, including Mike. Uh, Mike has been safely relocated in the backyard somewhere. She watered the newly placed plants, soaking them with life-giving water. And she said she can't wait to see the flowers that bloom from them, as she hadn't recalled what blossoms from iris or hostas looked like. I was grateful I didn't take a nap that afternoon and decided to plant with her. Her spirit was in wonder as I called her to the dining room picture window to see the nuthatches and chickadees feeding from the bird feeder her grandparents gave to her. She was ecstatic. And if you're wondering, yeah, she named the birds too. <laughs> Sophie was born four days, four days after the Sandy Hook shooting. I vividly recall sitting on my couch in the house in, in Colorado watching the news, questioning if I had done the right thing to bring a child into this world of gun violence. It shook me. Those children were in the image of God. Sophie's made in the image of God. Christ among us. Everything she is, everything that she sees is Christ among us. For through her, I am, and other children, I might add, I am reminded of the innocence of childhood and, and just how big just about every child's heart really is. The empathy and compassion are not in short supply. And perhaps only at bedtime does apathy come in abundance. But observably so, and the but there is intentional. As we age, in Old Testament biblical terms, our hearts have a tendency to harden. The challenge for us all may not 
be to maintain the size of our heart, but the hope our heart has for humanity. The hope that I discovered Bob Bailey so often expressed in his dreams for a brighter tomorrow. That same hope I have for my little girl. This current world, this world of gun violence, of mistrust. I wear pajamas. Yeah, you're wearing your lava pajamas. <laughs> <sighs> Everything that we see in the world around us. As we get older, do we only see the villain in one another? Or can we see heroes? I have a hard time not agreeing for her. While I wrote this reflection, uh, she was immersed with playing with her toys on the living room floor, her imagination being vocalized in conversation between the toys as she plays by herself. I remember that uh, doing that by myself uh, with, with Lego or, or with, with Star Wars action figures alone or with my friends, unaware of any violence around me at that same age. as an adult now and, and one called by Christ to serve God and God's creation. I can't and I won't be complacent in arguing for social reform, for arguing that no one deserves to be shot regardless of their skin color, for a correctional system that is more deeply flawed and skewed to the detriment of people of color. I can't and I won't be complacent in arguing or proactively advocating for gun laws that actually help my child's survival rate. For in her, in all those lives lost this past week, I see the Imago Dei, the image of God. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus meets his disciples in another seemingly random appearance after resurrection. But this communing with his friends is no random act. The presence of those lost, the spirit of loved ones that have had their breath reclaimed by God remains a powerful statement to continuing the legacy of life that was lived. Jesus's life wasn't a figment of the disciples' imagination. And Jesus' appearance to them in this moment, dining over broiled fish, is a reminder of the prophetic legacy Jesus lived and breathed into them. That Jesus, the love that Jesus preached, must not be forsaken. Resurrection is indeed on the other side. They were, as our scriptures read, the, the, the disciples, that is, witnesses to these things, witnesses to resurrection, to something new. And so are we. What goes on around us can no longer be ignored if it was before. Jesus' command to love one another must not be some forgotten phrase or because our comforts may have been turned like the tables in a temple. We are witnesses. But more than that, we are made in the image of God. Violence does not become the spirit we are created in. And if we are to see a brighter future, a brighter day for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, all those who will come to live after us, then we must be Christ among us today. We must be the change we wish to see in the world. And hopefully you still wish this. After many conversations with Alice, I firmly believe Bob's creative 
in faithful mind was stirring with an activity of ideas in which God's created world could benefit from peaceful, environmental, loving ways of change. And his legacy won't be forgotten by me. And I'll do what I can to instill that hope he had in the heart of my daughter. That she may not lose her big heart. And remain witness. Witness to the love Christ came. To give to us all. Every once in a while. I encounter a conversation about the second coming of Christ. The conversations are always fascinating, but they usually uh, ask the question, uh, if I am prepared to see Jesus when Jesus comes, as if the manifestation of a second coming is the very real personhood of Jesus, that is, uh, to be certain from these conversations that I've had, the actual uh, caricature that we see in many of our churches, which to be sure, the looks of Jesus Christ are still heavily debated. I mean, in our time today, would many people recognize a historically brown-skinned Palestinian claiming to be Jesus coming back? I doubt it. But I believe I have been witness to the resurrected Christ among us. In the spirit of those who constantly tirelessly advocate for the least of these. Second coming isn't my response to the question, perhaps the hundred millionth coming that is present in the spirit of those I see in the image of God. Christ is among us. Christ has been among us. Christ will continue to be among us. Will we be witnesses to that presence? I'm going to turn back to sharing my screen, but before I, I, I close my reflection, Take a moment and look at this image. I'm sure it's familiar to all of you. The image is a reminder of humanity's relationship with God. And perhaps a challenge to us all to shift the paradigm we see here. God's hand outstretched, reaching for a seemingly lazy human hand. It tells a story. One we have been witnesses to. I pray for, for us and the legacy that Bob leaves behind for all of us who have known him well. And for all of us, as we impart our own wisdom on our children, those we leave behind us, that this image shifts to two outstretched hands, fingers interlocking, for Christ is among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, let us turn our hearts and minds to prayer this time. I want to invite you to take a few moments and pray, pray for your needs in, in silence and I'll offer a prayer for all of us. Let us pray.
Gracious God, here in this space, hear our prayers. Breathe into those who grieve your comfort and peace and hope the days to come will provide more light shining on them than the day before. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the world around us, for your image in everything, absolute everything, is created, touched by your hand, life breathed into by your spirit. Open our eyes, awaken our senses, that we see your presence in it all. God, in these days, help us find the courage and strength to make the necessary changes in our lives, to lift others on the margins, even if perhaps that comes at our own expense. Help us recognize this beloved community so diverse, so beautifully and wonderfully made. And remind us of the innocence of our own childhood. Bring us back to those days. That if our hearts have been hardened, that the love you have for us soften them, create space in our hearts, compassion and empathy, place behind us all apathy, allow us to love fully as Christ loved fully. Gracious God, be with us as we grieve, as we continue to mourn our losses and still find hope, hope in you and in Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Friends, without your continued support of Salem and Salem's mission and ministry, uh, it wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be a bright spot in the Farmington community. I am sure you are aware of your potential. As I've shared it with your leadership team, I am fully aware of the power of ministry, the potential it still has yet to be uncovered, has for the Farmington community, and your gifts help support that. Let's take a moment to give thanks and praise for the offerings given 
and for those yet to be given, and for the ministry provided. Would you pray with me? We give with joy, gracious God, for you have been with us even when we were unfaithful. You have kept us in safety through times of grave distress. We can call on you in all times and places, in life and in death, knowing that your strength is available to sustain us. We give now that your church may be empowered in the proclamation of good news, in the transformation of human life. Amen. Put your trust in God as you face another week. Good affirms you and claims your faithfulness. We will open our eyes to the goodness of God. We seek to follow faithfully where Christ leads. Turn away from vain words and seeking after lies. Seek the purity of life we find in Christ Jesus. We pray for honest insight as we seek truth. Oh, that we might see the good in ourselves. We have been touched by mystery and wonder. Let us live as God's beloved children. What we will become has not yet been revealed. We are confident in God's will for us. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. believe in the risen one. I 
believe I overcome by the power of his blood Amen Amen I'm alive I'm alive because he lives Amen Amen Let my song join the one that never ends because he dead in the grave I was covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name you rolled the stone away amen amen I'm alive Go in the presence of Jesus Christ. Love and serve the world. Go and do and be that church. Amen. And amen.